Whether you're a total casual, a Wi-Fi warrior, a tournament goer, or any mix of the three, you've run into campy players. And you've been beaten by them. And the indignity of that loss drove you here to a video like this. Well, don't worry. Like a wizened old kung fu master sitting atop a mountain shaped like a GameCube controller, we will teach you the way to avenge your defeat. And stand up to that Samus who bullies you with projectiles and takes all your lunch money, uh, GSP. In this video, we're not gonna keep things simple. We're gonna start at the casual level, like free-for-all with items level, and we're gonna gradually move into that good enough to be casuals, but not good enough to go to tournaments level. And if you're looking for even more tips to level up your play, check out ProGuides.com. Our website has a bunch of videos to help you improve, like lessons from the pros and a live coaching platform. At the casual level, defensive play can be surprisingly effective for one simple reason. It reduces all the factors of learning down to just one thing. Hitting the shot. Smash has a huge amount of information to absorb that new players get overwhelmed at. Sitting in the corner and firing projectiles reduces the info you need to know by a lot. Isolating the thing you want to learn or get better at is actually a great way to improve too. It's why a lot of top players spend as much time practicing combos and techniques in training mode as they do playing friendlies. Your brain memorizes and absorbs things more easily when there's less interference. So if you're playing at a casual level, the trick is to do the same thing and cut down how much you're trying to do. Basically, press less buttons. Against ranged characters, don't throw out attacks if you're not near them. To experienced players, this is obvious, but we all started as casuals, and as casual, not only is it fun to just click buttons, sometimes it works. In casual play, people will often walk right into each other's attacks. The first step is to get in range by either dodging or blocking the projectile. Most new players like to roll to dodge because it feels intuitive and helps you move, but rolls are a pretty slow option and when you do them over and over, they become even slower. Instead, you want to jump and shield projectiles. Both of these options don't leave you as vulnerable as a roll and let you get moving faster. Leapfrogging projectiles or shielding and then approaching is a lot more mobile and flexible than rolling. Jumping can be especially useful because you can hit with an aerial as soon as you dodge the projectile. As that campy friend starts getting better, they'll know you want to hit them after they miss a shot, and they'll shield when you get close. If they shield a lot, you just have to grab instead of attack. Eventually, that campy player will realize a quick attack will be to grab, then you have to either hit them with an attack first or shield their attack, then respond. On top of all this, remember to be patient. At every level, projectile players want you to get impatient and run in and get hit. If you're on a stage with platforms, you can always hop up there to dodge the projectile and buy some time. During that time, be sure to take a serious look at the projectile, get a feel for how fast it goes, how far it goes, and how long it takes before they can fire another one. Plus, this gives your projectile-loving friend a taste of their own medicine. Now let's say you know a little something about Smash, like how to short hop, some bread and butter combos, some ways to edge guard, ledge trap, and tech chase, but you're not an expert yet and you're still practicing some fundamentals. At this level, campy players can be more frustrating than ever. Like you, they know enough to put together a basic game plan, and there's a good chance that their game plan is a lot easier to execute, and on top of that is a lot more tilting. But just like at the casual level, you can beat it with a mix of patience and thought. Now that you're a little better, it's time to think about lag and actionable frames. When playing against projectile characters, being able to react is important, which means you need actionable frames. These are frames where you're allowed to do something. Basically, you aren't in lag. Obviously, after you attack, grab, or roll, you're gonna be in lag, but you're also gonna lose those actionable frames when you're dropping shield in your initial dash and landing after a jump. Dropping shield in particular takes 11 frames, which absolutely gives your opponent enough time to beam you in the face with a fast projectile. Good defensive players will actually react to you dropping shield by firing a projectile. Even if the projectile can't hit you in 11 frames, chances are you are inputting another move, so you're vulnerable anyways. It's even more important to watch what buttons you press at this level. Casual players won't punish you for dropping shield or running or jumping. Mid-level players will. At this point, campers will also be waiting to see what option you pick and have a counter to it ready. For example, Samus has very obvious punish options for every approach. If you jump over Samus's projectiles, she can forward air. If you run up and shield, she can tether grab. If you jump over her to cross her up, she up specials. If you run in head on, she lands the charge shot. However, if the Samus guesses the wrong approach option, she's in trouble. If she thinks you'll shield and you jump, then she'll grab and you can land a hit while she's stuck in lag. If she thinks you'll jump and you shield, she'll forward air, then you can hit her as she lands. 
If she lands with time to shield, you can run in and dash grab because she'll be expecting a whiff punish and shield. So to beat the Campy Samus' game plan, you have to mix up your approaches so she won't know what you want to do. And you should read what the Samus likes to do. If the Samus loves her forward aerial, then don't jump in as often. A lot of Campy players will have very specific timing windows and plans that you can bait out. For example, if they always do a standing grab, you can shield out of grab range or run in and then out of range or predict their grab with a spot dodge. You also want to take most campers to platform stages. Like at the casual level, you can use these platforms to wait out and learn projectile patterns. At this level, you can also use platforms to vary your approach even more. Just remember that being above opponents usually isn't good. Better players are gonna realize this and punish you if you stay above them for too long. Once you're in range of the camper, you need to start thinking about their defensive options. If you chase them to a corner only to miss your attack and let them roll back to center stage, you've lost that interaction. They tricked you into giving them center stage and probably frustrated you. At this level, the common defensive options are rolling, jumping, grabbing, counter-hitting, and spot dodging. Chances are they'll do one of these options too much, and you can punish them for it. You can punish shield with a dash grab. You can punish jumping with an anti-air attack or a super fast aerial option. You can punish grabbing with a spot dodge and then a counter hit. You can punish counter hitting by shielding and then grabbing or attacking depending on how much lag their move has and if it puts them in the air or not. And finally, you can punish rolling by predicting or reacting to the direction and hitting them as they leave the roll animation. A lot of super defensive players will go to the corner and want to roll in. In the corner, there's no space to roll back, and they're much closer to the blast zone, so they get punished a lot harder for rolling away. The tricky part now is the mind game. If you guess that they'll shield, you'll grab. If they don't shield and jab instead, they'll hit you out of your grab. If you guess they'll grab and spot dodge, they can wait and hit you as your spot dodge ends. To win this mind game, you have to look at what they're doing and find patterns. Players at this level will be slower to mix up their patterns. That means you'll get a longer window to beat the crap out of them for picking the same options, but be careful. They may start changing their patterns. This is where patience is important. Remember that it's okay to lose the mind game a few times as long as you're paying attention. The campiest characters can put on damage pretty well, but either have linear or poor kill options. You can afford to take some damage, just try to find the pattern the camper is using. Don't get discouraged or frustrated, because that's exactly how a campy opponent is trying to make you feel. Another big trick to beating campers at this level is pure and simple matchup knowledge. If you don't know how Piranha Plant works, you're gonna get hit a few times by the Spike Ball. When you know how Spike Ball works, you can dodge it much more easily. Knowing how your main works in the matchup is huge too. Your character may have specific options that help against camp, like Game & Watch's Bucket, Joker's Rebels Guard, and, higher levels, Wario's Waft. Knowing your main and the matchup can really help you take those tents down and pack up all those sleeping bags. Get it? Because you're stopping the... Camping. Okay. I think that's enough for this video. Remember that this time around, we're focusing on the lower levels of play, so these tips aren't crazy complex. If you want more intermediate and advanced tips on how to beat the campers, let us know in the comments. We're paying attention. We want to make videos that help different levels of skill and learn from any mistakes we make along the way. And if you're looking for those pro-level tips, you know where to go.